The brain is topographic, clearly. Are neural networks topographic? Why do we need topography inside a neural network? Hi, this is Manak, and I'm here today to present about uh, toponets. What I do is I deal with computer vision, deep learning, etc. And yeah, so let's begin with the slides, shall we? All right. So let's go to the first slide. I think we know all this. The brain is the best computing machine. I mean, it probably consumes less than what your phone charges on, less than 20 watts, which is like hyper efficient for what it sort of pulls off, right? I mean, we have been to the moon, all of that just on 20 watts. All right, so the thing with the brain is that we have different functional regions of the brain, which are responsible for different tasks. There's a region for bodies. There's a region which processes motion. There's even a region for music which is, I believe, distinctly human. And moving on, yeah, this is the famous Penfield map. This is a part of the brain right here. This is only one uh, hemisphere of the brain. And what we see here is that there are different regions of the brain which are responsible in sort of processing different sensory input. So there's a region for tongue, and there's a region for face, etc. There's foot, everything. And what if we map this onto the body? Like, based on the neural resources which are allocated to certain parts of the body, what if we sort of project it onto our body and see what we get in, term, in, in terms of the scale? So it turns out the hands are huge because, I mean, there are a lot of, there's a lot of brain power being employed on whatever we feel through our, we do everything with our hands, right? No wonder the, the homunculus looks like this, right? And there's a lot, I mean, the lips, the teeth, not the teeth, sorry, the tongue, etc., is massive, right? Which is kind of self-explanatory. And you can see the legs, I mean, they're kind of skinny. So now that we have established that, the brain is topographic, clearly. But are neural networks topographic? No. When you plot the weights of a neural network, they look like random noise. I mean, when you look at the weights, and you try to figure out, okay, is there, is there a region that processes faces, bodies, etc.? You don't see anything, right? Let's move ahead. Neural networks don't have topography. Very bad. Why do we need topography inside a neural network? Turns out we can replicate brain regions more effectively if neural networks are topographic. We can build better models of the brain, but there's this computational advantage as well. Like we can sort of save money on inference because if it's topographic, it's, it has lower number of parameters. So we can sort of run inference on, on, on a lower number of parameters and it's also more interpretable in that sense because uh, if one region of the neural network deals with the face and if this region is dealing with the neck, the region in between probably deals with both or probably deals with something that is related to both. All right, let's look at some existing approaches which tackle inducing topography inside a neural network. There's, there was this paper by Fenil Doshi from 2020 where what they do is that they train the neural network by itself. It's like a post hoc method. And they project the weights onto a, a cortical sheet and they use some sort of a self-organizing map. And it only works on vision models. There has been other attempts as well with stuff like locally connected corn filters, which was in 2024. The, the, the performance drop on this was significant, which is not good news. You want, like, not just, we, we don't just want it to be brain-like. We also want it to be Functionally equally as good, right? So this was one paper by Taha Ben Horaim. So there's this one common factor between all of these attempts. The common factor being there is no computational benefit we are getting out of all of these attempts. Computational benefits being the lower dimensionality, lower number of parameters, etc. We don't have any of those in the existing approaches that we have yet. Okay, so now that we've seen what the attempts could not do. We know what we want. We want a minimal sort of, uh, uh, we, we don't need to take a hit on the objective task class as well. Uh, we need to do it on texts and vision. And, in, and we need the computational benefits as well. So let's go into Topolas now. We're going to build Topolas from scratch. All right, this is a neural network layer, input, output, weight. So when we scale this up to two weights, all right, we got W1, W2. Two outputs of the layer. Let's scale this up further. We see that the oh, that the output is clearly a function of the input, and it also depends on the weights clearly. So if you move this knob, 
this is bound to change. So we are going to scale this up further with n outputs and way more weights. What we do now is that we take the output of the layer, the output units of the layer, and we project them into this virtual cortical sheet. We take the outputs of the layer and we arrange it in a, as a sheet, like a 2D sheet, okay? And we can, of course, arrange the weights as like a 2D sheet as well. So we go on then. If, if the network is topographic, in our, in our way of thinking, if the network, if the layer is topographic, this cortical sheet should have, uh, like, like the, the nearby weights should be similar to each other compared to the weights that is sort of far away from it. What we do now is that we take the rearrange weights and we downsample it by a factor. And we upsample it again by the same factor. So this tensor and this tensor have the same shapes. And then we compute the cosine similarity between the downsampled, upsampled weight and the initial weight. And our goal is to maximize the cosine similarity between these two, all right? It's like a compression and decompression thing. So to, to give you an example, let's say this is, um, this is a neural network weight space, let's say, or the, the layer output space. We now sample it to from 64 by 64 to 20 by 20. And when we upsample it again, it kind of looks blurrier. And it has, and when we compute the topo loss between this and this, the topo loss is 0 0.13. So the, the topo loss for that comes down to be not so great, but for like a, for like a synthetic gradient that I build, we, we can sort of do the same process and we're getting a great topo loss. So we do this on the neural network while training. What we do is that we take the topo loss value and the total loss is normal loss plus topo loss scaled by a factor. What we see then is that when we train a ResNet 18 and we apply topo loss on a particular layer, what we see is that we, we find regions in that cortical sheet. So we get uh, body selective regions in the cortical sheet, faces as well. And unsurprisingly, we get scene selective region as well, which is kind of disjoint from the faces and bodies, which is good news. So let's, what we did next is that we trained a GPT Neo on uh, fine web edu data set. And this is like a hand-built data set that contains a bunch of text related to certain topics, politics, science, history, etc. And then after training the model using Topolos, while training the model, uh, we were doing forward passes of these topics through the model after a certain number of steps. And what we found is that when the model trains, it starts with this. The weights look like this for a, for a certain layer. And as we train, it's, it's like a self-organizing system. It finds its own place and it kind of settles into where it wants to settle into. So this is what we get in language models. And moving on, yeah, so this is the good news, all right? With research code, we usually do not get code that's, it's like a messy GitHub repo or something, but we do not want that. We built a Python library. You can just pip install to open it into your own machine. And like we, with like three lines of code, be it MNIST data set, ImageNet data set, GPTs, you can select the layer where you want topo. You have to define a class, a, a couple of parameters, and you're kind of all set to run topo loss on your neural networks. So yeah, this is where the presentation ends. So thank you all for joining. And this is where my presentation ends. I wish it was longer, but I think it's fine. <laughs>